Hello, and welcome to Vovork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the ninth in the 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to build a vCenter orchestrator environment on top of VMware Fusion. In the previous video, we saw how to install and configure the vCenter orchestrator virtual appliance. In this video, we'll see how to install and launch the VCO client. To install the orchestrator client, the first thing we'll do is open up a browser and go to http colon slash slash. In my case, I'll go to vco.vvork.info. Obviously, you should change that URL to whatever is appropriate in your environment. Then at that web page, we will download and run the VCO client installer. We'll accept the end user license agreement. We'll specify where we want the VCO client installed. And then as one of the last steps in the installer, we get to specify where the VCO client icon should be created. For instance, whether or not we want one created on the desktop. To get things started, we will click on a browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome. And in here, we're going to set the URL to our VCO server. So vco.vvork.info in my case, change that URL to whatever's appropriate in your case. We'll hit enter. We'll click the proceed anyway button. And then this is a screen that we've actually seen before. Uh, we saw this screen in the previous video when we went into configure the VCO server using the orchestrator configuration service. What we're going to do now though uh, at this point, if we want to actually log into VCO and start creating workflows, we could either click on this link here, Start Orchestrator Client, which uh, runs the Orchestrator Client through a browser window, or we can install that same Orchestrator Client as a separately uh, standalone uh, application by clicking on the link here labeled Download vCenter Orchestrator Client Installable. Again, it's the same VCO client, but the link up top runs the client in the browser. The link on the bottom installs the client as a standalone application. Now, as you see, we have multiple choices here that we can select from. We have some 64-bit versions of the client, and we have some 32-bit versions. We have versions that run on Windows and Mac and Linux. Uh, in my case, since I'm on a Windows VM, I'm going to select the orchestrator client installation file for Windows 32-bit. Hey, as you can see here, there was a little bit of a, a slowdown there. I got a little impatient. I clicked the link multiple times. I didn't actually need to run it multiple times. I've got two copies downloaded. I only need one of them, obviously. But I'm going to click on, they're both the same thing, so I'm going to click on the down arrow on one of them and choose Open. We'll click Yes to run the installer. On the introduction screen, we'll simply click the Next button. We'll accept the end user license agreement and click Next. On this screen, we get to choose where to install the VCO client. I'm going to allow it to install in the default location. We'll click Next. Here, we get the choice of installing the client, the client, or the client. Uh, this same installer, uh, when uh, we package it differently, gives you the choice of installing the VCO client or the VCO server or both. Here, since this is just a client installer, it doesn't really give you any choice. You have to choose client. So we'll click Next. Now it asks where we want icons created. For instance, if I wanted an icon created on the desktop, I could say so here. If I want Icon, uh, excuse me, an icon created in the, the start menu. That's the default. So you just specify where you want your icons created and click next. Then on this installation summary screen, we double check everything. Looks good. We'll click install and let the installation proceed. And as you can see, the VCO client is now successfully installed, so we'll click Done. 
And just to make certain everything's working, I'll close this browser window. We're going to launch the VCO client and log in just to verify everything's okay. So we'll click Start. And then under All Programs, VMware, you will find the VCO client. We're going to log into vco.vwork.info on port 8281. That's the normal port number. The default account name is VCO Admin, and the default password is VCO Admin, which I almost typed there, but then I messed it up. There we go. So VCO Admin for the username, VCO Admin for the password. We'll click Login. Uh, usual SSL self-signed certificate issue here. I'm going to get a little tired of these, so I'm going to check the checkbox to say, go ahead and install the certificate and stop bothering me with this window. We'll click Ignore. And as you can see, we are now successfully logged in to the VCO client. Do stick around for the next video. As you know, this was the ninth in a 10-part video series. That means it's our last video coming up. And in that last video, I'm going to show you how to actually run a VCO workflow. So see you in the next video.